Hello and Namaste. My name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. In this video, we will learn about a technique called variable reflection. It's a technique we can employ to bring our data in more alignment with the assumptions of regression. And as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's get to work. Just a quick reminder, we are using the Boston data set in these videos. So here are all the variables and what they represent. In this video, we will work with the PT ratio variable, which is the pupil teacher ratio by town. In many transformations, we are trying to unskew our data. So a reminder that a right skew distribution has a long tail to the right and a left skew distribution has a long tail to the left. So skewness also comes in orders of magnitude. So we have right skew mild, right skew moderate, right skew severe, and of course we have the same in terms of left skew. And depending on the severity of the skew, we will implement certain transformations to try to unskew our variable. Now to the heart of this video, why reflect variables in the first place? In general, it is easier to work with skewed distributions that all skew in the same direction. It is standard practice that the same direction be to the right, since we read plots from left to right, and many transformation functions make more sense left to right. Using the addition of a constant, we can also eliminate taking the logarithm of numbers less than one, and avoid dividing by zero when using the multiplicative inverse transformation. So long as we transform all values of a variable, it's just math. Now note that the interpretation will be reversed until that variable is unreflected. So if we make a transformation, add a constant to it, we have to keep in mind that the interpretation of our coefficients are potentially going to be a lot different than they were before reflection. Now, of course, the variable can be unreflected at the end, but we always have to keep in mind where we are in terms of our transformation and our interpretation. Now let's discuss the basic reflection process. First, we discover a left skew distribution or distributions, meaning long tail to the left. Then we find the maximum value of the variable. So whatever the highest numerical value is in that variable. Then we add one to each observation. And I'll put an asterisk there by the word one because it doesn't have to be one. But in this case, we'll use one as an example. And I will talk about this more here in a second. So for example, if our observations were 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we added 1 to each one, they would now read 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So add 1 to each observation. So in this case, our maximum value would now be 5. Then we subtract the original value from that sum. So in that previous example I just stated, if the maximum value is now 5, then we subtract the original value of 4, and now we have a value of 1 for that observation. This will result in the maximum value now having a value of one and all other values that were below the original maximum are now above one to the right, completing the reflection. So mathematically, it looks like this. Add one in this case for this example and then subtract the original value. So remember, if the highest value was four, we would add one to that. Now it is five minus the original four. Now it's one. Now let's say, we had a value of two. In that case, the maximum value was four plus one, so now it's five, minus two, that's the original value. Now it has a value of three. See how that works? Let's say the point of zero. So the maximum was four originally, plus one, so now it's five, and then we subtract the original value of zero. Now the value is five. So we went from a value of zero to a value of five. See how the reflection works? It's pretty straightforward as long as you get the general pattern. Now, as I mentioned, the constant does not have to be one. It can be any value. That can be useful for making all values positive, for example. So in the previous slide, I mentioned that when we're taking logarithms, we want the lowest value to be one. So what we can do is change the value of the constant so that when we do our transformation and reflection, the lowest value is one. And then from there, we can do our logarithmic transformation if that's the one we have decided on. 
also the case for dividing by zero, avoiding dividing by zero. So if we're doing the multiplicative inverse, the denominator, that is the value of our variable, cannot be zero. So we can change the constant so that the minimum value again is one, and therefore one divided by one is of course one. Here is the original PT ratio variable distribution. We can see that we have a minimum of about 12 and a maximum of about 22. Again, this is pupil teacher ratio in the Boston data set. After reflection, it looks like this. So reflect, and now it's a mirror image of itself. And we did that just by doing the process in the previous slide. So the maximum value here was about 22. We added one to that, so 23, and then subtracted each value from that. So now we can see that the maximum of 22 is now a minimum of one. And then from there, we can continue the process with a square root transformation. So here is the original data. We can see that the distribution is skewed left. We reflect, so now it's skewed slightly right. And then we know that in the arsenal of the transformations we have learned up to this point, the square root transform is sort of the mildest. So we go ahead and do the square root transform. And now we have what looks like when we put the curve on top, a normal distribution. Of course, we do have that one value there that is pretty high, but overall it follows a normal distribution. Now I do wanna add here that these are just techniques to have in your toolkit. They don't necessarily apply to each situation and they're not optimal always in each situation. This is where the art of data transformation comes into its four. So you have to look into the data and see, hmm, which ones are skewed, which ones are skewed, which direction, which ones are skewed, mild, moderate, and severe. Then should I reflect them to get rid of certain values like below one or zero, and then see what you get. There is no silver bullet here. Transformations are just a technique to get the variables in better accordance with the assumptions of regression. Sometimes they're appropriate, sometimes they work very well, sometimes they work okay, and sometimes they don't work at all. It's just a technique to have in your toolbox. Okay, that wraps up this video on variable transformations, reflecting variables. So I hope this exposed you to a new technique you might not have been aware of before, where you can get your data in tip top shape so that it meets the assumptions of regression. So I hope you found this video helpful and learned something new. I wish you all the best in your work and studies, and I will see you again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.